Hello everybody, this is Filament Corner, Corner of Filament, Corner of Fun, and today we're going to be talking about another roll of filament. Now, this is WYZ Works filament, and it is what they call rainbow filament, or it's just gradient, it changes colors as it goes. Now, I normally take a bit more off before I call a review, but because this is gradient filament, at this stage it's kind of done with what makes it special because it's mainly just this one last color. So, let's talk about the spool. Now, on the spool, on the front it says WYZ works PLA 1.75 1kg or 2.2 pounds. It shows their website www.wyzworks.com and at the bottom it shows a little thing that says 3D on it. Now if we turn to the back it actually tells you what it is. Rainbow. Tells you the weight 1kg. Tells you it's a PLA. Tells you the print temp of 190 to 220 and it tells you it's 1.75 millimeter and it even tells you the batch number and this one has a little stamp on it that says inspector ovary so they might have somebody inspecting them or it could be a machine I don't know now I don't know if this is a custom spool that they've gone with but it's it's interesting because these pop off. So the, the sides pop off. And whenever I saw this, I thought, okay, well, that's pretty cool because this hole is pretty small. Even for my uh, stock one house spool holder, this is just barely big enough to fit on it. So if you're running something that has a bigger spool holder, you'll have to pop these off. And while that was cool, and I popped them off, I soon run into a problem. So this spool, it feeds through the bottom into here. And because there's no rim around this, that little piece of filament that is holding all this onto the spool is going to be rubbing on your spool holder if it's going through it and it's going to make it be locked. Whenever it rolls, it won't roll perfect. It'll roll locked because it's got that little piece of filament sticking out of the bottom trying to hold all the filament in. Well, it's going to make it roll locked. So it's not going to roll straight. So then I put these back on and I ran up these because I didn't want to run off a spool that isn't going to roll straight. So that's, that's one thing that could be improved if this is a custom spool, which it may not be, would be to either redirect that exit onto the side or just add a little bit of a rim so that way it'll make this hole a little bit smaller, but you won't be rolling locked because of that little piece of filament sticking out of the bottom. So it's an interesting spool, but like I said, if you're running something that uses a bigger diameter, you may face that a lot problem. So this is Rainbow Filament from WYZ Works, and I contacted them about if they wanted any other uh, filaments they wanted reviewed. Send them a link to my channel or to this channel and they didn't really say anything so I bought this with my own money and I've been planning on doing a review on this and they didn't say anything yay or nay so let's continue on with the review we will come back and I'll show you all the cool things that I printed with this filament and the ups and downs of it alright so the spool will start you off with this color of a red and this is a Raspberry Pi case. All the links for these Lingaverse Creations K 
can be found in the description as always. And so this is your starting color on the gradient or rainbow filament. And it looks pretty good. I had a bit of a problem stringing, however, I have removed that from the model. And that was my biggest problem was just stringing. I managed to reduce it to where it wasn't really that big of a problem, only like a few strands. And that was just with temperature settings. But as you can see, that's a pretty pretty decent color red. And so it goes from red to orange. And one of the next things I've printed, other than that, that was also supposed to be functional, was this Y-axis cable chain for the one how. And it printed out all right. I had to remove it because it's causing print quality issues. That's why it's not on the printer. But it moves. And that is, we've kind of moved over into the orange of the gradient filament. Now, I thought I'd just be using this filament for nothing but artistic things. And obviously, I've shown myself to be wrong there because I've already shown you a couple of functional prints. But where this filament really shines is in the large prints. So I will show you a large print right here. This is the birdhouse that unfolds from Thingiverse. It is a beautiful design and as you can see the gradient effect can be seen. And it gets even better whenever you actually unfold it because as you can see it gets even better. Now you can see the yellow but you can see it on all the panels giving a nice custom looking birdhouse that if you just use one color PLA, you just have one color. With, well, with this, we've got a nice changing color. So this is where the gradient or rainbow filament, I'm going to keep on calling it gradient, but it's actually named rainbow. That's where this rainbow filament shines, is in actually large prints of change colors. Now, we go from that orange into yellow, and here's a little origami bunny that I printed in it. Uh, didn't print it for any supports and he's a little bit he's got a little bit of problems around the head and the ears. But other than that he looks pretty good. And you can see that that yellow is starting to actually turn into more of a green. Or at least I can see that. Now I wanted to do another big print, and so I did one. I did another hand. This hand is the uh, jointed hand off of Thingiverse, and this one was printed in Maker Geeks Green Pet G, and this one looks all right. It is a jointed hand, so you can bend the hand. But I wanted to print one of these in rainbow filament, and I wanted a left hand. So I just took the model into the slicer and I mirrored the actual large part and here is the hand. Now as you can see the fingers differ a lot from the actual main piece of the hand but you can see it goes from a more of a yellowish green to a more dark green. Now there's a little bit of problems on this model and I found out that that was actually a little bit of under extrusion from the speed that I was printing at with this model. And I really found that out after I did this finger right here. So this finger shows off classic under extrusion whenever you look at it really closely. And I left it on here just so that way I could be reminded about that. Now what I did was I simply increased my temperatures because 
I was trying to get rid of the stringing, so I increased retraction. Well, increasing retraction led to under extrusion, plus the high speed that I was printing at. So I increased the temperature of the filament to compensate for the speed and retraction. And I got this finger, and this finger looks, it looks a lot better. It's not under extruded nearly as bad. So it looks a lot better. And then the next finger I printed was this one, and I had a bit of a slicing error with the actual bottom part here. And that was the slicer. I fixed it though, and as you can see, I printed it out. The weird thing though is the transition to the blue of this filament. Like the thumb, this part, and the pinky, they all look different from any other examples that I've shown you of this changing color. It's quite odd. And so, after I did, after I finished the hand, I was doing some small tests with actually press fitting uh, press fitting M6 screws and uh, here's one of those. I printed the foot in the blue and this is the blue and I can actually see the infill in this. Now it's not too easy to see it because I have shell, I have, I have a lot of shells or perimeters However, I noticed it up close and I went and reduced the number of shells and printed out this cute octopus says hello model. And it's a lot easier to see that infill in this print than in now, the other I'm print. I'm picking it up on camera. Well, hopefully it's picking oh, it up. Oh, it is. It looks like little, like webs. And I don't know, there. I don't know why we transitioned because, as you saw with the hand, the hand did have infill. It didn't, sh it, you couldn't see the infill in it. But now, once we've transitioned from the green to the blue and purple, we're seeing infill. And I don't know why, maybe it's a process for the changing of the colors but give it another spin and I'll show them because I, I was picking it up on here just go slow yeah you see the little lines so I'm not I'm not sure why this is happening and maybe it has to do with the colors affecting the filament but it's quite odd now one of the last one of the last things I did was another one another press fitting leg. And you can see how it's changing into that sort of purplish reddish. Kind of a wine color. A maroon, isn't it? And with this one, you can see the infill I can see the infill in it now. The camera probably won't be able to pick that up the same as no, the other foot. I'm not wait, I picked up a little bit right there, but not it's hard to see on here. But I find that I find that odd. So I've shown off all the different things I've printed now. The hand I had a hard time printing the fingers, which is why the colors vary so differently. It's, it wasn't the filament so much as it was the fingers themselves. The fingers are difficult to print. And I know this from the other hand. And part of it was getting them to stick. Sometimes they wouldn't stick to the print bed. Sometimes they wouldn't stick to their own built-in supports. Which led me to having to use more supports. Which is why they kind of look more messy than this hands fingers but that wasn't so much the filament as it was the print bed and the models themselves so overall the biggest problem I had was stringing however I minimized it with just not even messing with traction just temperature fine-tuning temperature 
and eventually whenever I got into the blue and purple, the retraction, the uh, retraction differences I've made in possibly the temperature differences or it could have been the filament but the stringing disappeared completely like the octopus had no stringing in its legs my press fit test pieces had no stringing in them whatsoever so I'm not I'm not sure exactly if it was my settings or if it was the filament changing but somewhere along the way the stringing issues did disappear now normally I would say it was my settings but considering that I can actually see the infill like I can't see it in this but I can see it in this I would might would say that it was the filament this filament costed me around forty seven dollars and overall it was a pretty good experience I would possibly buy it again for more big prints. So with that said, uh, one final note in case WYZ works are listening. My filament came and whoever had sent the package to the post office they didn't take care of it. The box was crushed. Luckily, the filament was in its bag and was unscathed. But the box was crushed. The post office claimed it wasn't them, even though they shoved the broken box into our mailbox. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember that, that. That doesn't make no sense to me. Yeah, the box is broken. Let's just shove it into yeah. their mailbox. A normal size mailbox, a small mailbox. Yep. Yeah. It took uh, it took a bit of time to pry it out. Yeah. So I remember that. Kurt, Kurt, you know, delivery people they do out a lot. Just just in case you guys are watching somebody messed up and they might mess up on somebody else's order and they may not be as forgiving as I am, they may mm -hmm. take it up against you. So you might want to look into uh the people that you have delivering your packages since the post office claims it wasn't them, even though they shoved it into my mailbox. Yeah, it was crushed. <laughs> Luckily, the filament was fine, and the filament, I've told you the ups and downs of it. So, with that said, I uh, hope this has been helpful and informative, and I have more things to review in the future.